It's been an entire year since Trailblazer Reloaded, but we are back. Leagues 5 The Raging Echoes is only a few weeks away. Let the countdown begin. What a reveal for day nine. We finally get an explanation of what the combat masteries are gonna be, which really makes choosing your region significantly more possible. I spent a bit of time dusting off my stats knowledge and putting together some sheets on how these relics will overall affect DPS. Be warned, this video is mostly numbers, and I can't guarantee they're all right. If someone knows stats better than me, please feel free to correct me and I'll update the description. A quicker summary will be at the end. First, let's go through tier one. Each tier comes with its own passive effect. For tier one, we save 95% of ammunition across magic and range. For the combat styles, we have three choices. First is melee. Melee gives us a 25% chance to roll your damage twice and pick the higher number. I simulated that in this chart here, where we have numbers one through five, which would be our max hit, and one through five, which is our actual hit. And you can see how these numbers actually change. So if we roll a four and a one, we'll take a four. What that actually does is we can turn that into a formula and it gives us this overall percent increase that sits around very quickly getting to about 8%. It scales with your higher max hit, but exponentially decreases in growth. And you can essentially express this sum as a new average hit, which is n times 2n minus 1 from 1 to n, all divided by n. That gets us this formula that we have here, and it levels out around 8%. Moving on to range, we have a similar idea here, except range simply raises your minimum hit to 30% of your max hit. So the main assumption here is that we're rounding down always, and we can see once we hit a max hit of 7, 30% of 7 is going to be 2.1. So now our 1s transition to 2s. That is expressible as two different sums. The common sum of n from 1 to n, plus the sum from 1 to n of 30% of n minus 1. Range is a little bumpier as far as the percentage increase, because once you cross into the next number, you get a big jump. But once again, averages out to about 7% once we pass those first couple weird levels. Finally, we have Mage for Tier 1. Mage is the simplest, but it does depend a lot on rounding. Anything over 90% of your max hit gets automatically multiplied by 1.5 times. Assuming the 90% rounds down, we won't get any effect on this until 10, but you can immediately see how your 9s go to 13s, your 10s go to 15s. As you move into 11s, 11s go to 15, 9 goes to 13, 10 goes to 15. Um, but quickly as your max rises, you lose some of these bottom numbers here as well, which is different than the other perks. But these higher numbers increasingly grow, and I even have a number down here at 100 where you get up to 150. I didn't do the exact math on this because I think it should be just as simple as 10% of the time, you'll get a 50% increase, that's 5%. I'll bring this up again at tier six, but this could have interesting interactions with tier six that guarantees a max. Is the max calculated before or after the 50% here? Anyways, moving on. For tier two, we increase all our healing by 20% as the passive effect, and then we get to choose among several different things. For melee, our hits now have a 10% chance to generate an additional echo hit, which is an ad additional melee hit with 50% of our max hit, and it respects the accuracy. This only works in PVM. As far as I can tell, the hit chance doesn't actually matter, although intuitively I thought it was. You can look at these first couple rows here, and even though I have the same max hit, average hit, whatever, as we change the chance hit, you actually get the same increase and the same damage per swing, it really doesn't matter. The calculation here is essentially the sum of the expected value of two different binomials, one being just simply our chance to hit times the average hit, the second being the chance of the echo hit against the average echo hit. I calculated this another way to be sure, considering the sum of each even with its dependent probability and got the same answer. Again, we average here just around 5%. Range for tier two is finally easy to actually understand. All of your hits gain 5% additional max hit until you hit your fifth one with 20%, and then it goes back down to zero. So I've modeled that here as 0% on the first hit, 5% on the second hit, 10, 15, 20, which averages out to 10. Some open questions are how it works when you transfer mobs and how many times you'll get this many hits anyways when you're working on a single mob. Mage tier 2 is also tremendously simple. You get a 5% damage increase per tick between attacks. We're not sure if this counts when you're not attacking or it really just means your weapon speed, but that would mean a 5 tick weapon gets a 25% increase and a 4 tick weapon gets a 20% increase. Moving on to tier 3. Here we get a passive 100% accuracy bonus across all three styles. This is, again is going to matter a lot more in tier 6, so we'll talk about it then. Although I do never know how to calculate this. Does that mean that double accuracy values? Does it mean that 40% chance is now an 80% chance to hit? From dead man experience, getting something like double accuracy still doesn't guarantee hits, so I'm assuming this is more like your actual stat bonuses. But please comment if you can confirm or link a jmod tweet as this always messes up my numbers every time I try to do this for dead men or leagues. Anyways, this is the same across all three styles. Universally, each style loses 20% of the weapon speed rounded down. This means everything loses a tick up to six ticks, which then starts losing two ticks. There are no mentioned restrictions here, so for now I'm assuming blowpipe could go down to one tick. You can see the percentage increases here in the DPS. 
Tier 4 is, has no DPS effects and simply gives us healing. Passively, we take 15% less damage. Melee has a 5% chance to heal 40% of the damage hit, which works out to be about 2% of overall healing. That means we need 5,000 damage to heal to full. Range is a weapon-dependent thing, where every 5 hits you heal 5 hit points. That means that every 99 attacks you should have full HP. Magic again is calculated off the max hit, and when you roll above 90% of your max hit, you'll automatically heal 10%. Again, once we get to tier 6, this is going to matter a lot. Moving on, the passive for tier 5 is prayer point gain from all sources is increased by 25%. Again, this tier is similar across all three, but we have here is an increase for all weapon speeds. For weapons 5 tick and up, we will do half of the weapon speed rounded down, and for 4 tick weapons, we will have half the speed rounded up. So 2 goes to 1, 3 to 2, 4 to 2, but then 5 also goes to 2, and 6 and 7 go to 3. You can see the percentage GPS increase this gives for weapons of that tier. Finally, tier 6 for melee. The passive effect here is 60% prayer penetration. Now I believe you could do different builds that we'll talk about at the end here. So you could do something like 5 and 5 with the 10 points you're allocated across these masteries. And if you don't actually take a tier 6 point, even though you technically have access to it, I don't think you'll actually get this effect. So 60% prayer penetration will only come if you get that tier 6 relic as far as I know. This does open up the opportunity of whether bosses will be praying. And it means you could potentially do things like Akka or Warden in TOA with their prayers without even having to actually switch gear. But moving on to the actual perks. Tier 6 melee. Tier 6 melee replaces the tier 2 melee perk. And now there's a 20% chance up from 10% chance for melee hits to cause an echo. Echoes can now cause echoes themselves up to a maximum depth of 8. This sounds really cool, and like you could have some giant chain of echoes, but I think if we do the math right here, it's actually really bad. I don't think this even matters for multi-hit weapons, as well you will get more chances at the echo hits, assuming they are based on the max hits of that split damage. I don't think this actually nets you anything, but I'll let the real statisticians prove me wrong if that's not true. In Dead Man, for example, there was a powerful relic because all hits had a chance of a flat plus 10. So essentially a multi-hit weapon could be adding a flat plus 20 or plat, flat plus 30. But here, because it's all percentage based, I don't think it's going to do the same thing. Anyways, for now, we can just consider the single hit weapons. And using a binomial distribution, we can see hitting at least one echo is a 20% chance as listed. But when you actually do the math on what that means, there's a 16% chance that you hit exactly one echo, a 3.2% chance you hit exactly two echoes, a 0.64% chance you hit exactly three echoes, and so on and so on, which sums together to be 20%. What that means is when you hit that first echo, you could do up to 50% damage, but, and it increases as you go down the list, but the chance becomes slimmer and slimmer exponentially so. So the expected increase here to me only looks like 11% overall. And since this is actually replacing tier two, when we subtract the 5% that we got from tier two from the 11% here, we actually only end up with around 6%. Moving on to range. Range is another easy one to comprehend, which is that you will never miss. This of course is gonna upgrade your DPS massively depending on what your actual hit chance is. Imagine things like doing Soul Heredit where he has incredible range defense, but now it actually doesn't matter, you can do whatever you want. The DPS increase here is gonna depend completely on your hit chance. The lower your hit chance, the more this actually matters. If you already had 100% hit chance, this would do nothing. But if you're down a 10% hit chance, you're actually gonna see a 900% increase across your hits. This really bakes in when we start choosing what gear we're gonna have. You could use something like the Eclipse at Lateral that applies with strength bonus, wear full strength armor, no range gear, always be hitting, and have it based off your strength bonus. Remember earlier though, in tier three, we also have a 100% accuracy increase. So unlike like what we normally expect in the main game, you're already gonna be hitting a lot more. So the incremental benefit of this isn't totally clear, but I just picked the number in the final calculation to give us an idea. Finally, we have tier six mage. This is very hard to estimate. You always max when the enemy health is below your max. This means with enough magic boosting gear, you could be doing Slayer tasks and max hitting exclusively every monster. Does this mean Kandarin has been revived? You also get a flat 1% max hit for every 100 HP your enemy has left, which really only is going to apply at bigger monsters or mostly just bosses and raids. How this works is going to depend a lot on how they do these calculations based around other percentage boosts. For instance, Aram's has a chance to increase your overall max hit. Does it have to proc for this to actually work? Is it always sort of baked in on what your max could be? All the other mage perks in the list that we talked about previously are also based around max hit. The other interesting thing is because you're guaranteed to max hit and heals happen at above 90% max hit, you're going to be hitting very high. Similarly, because you always get 50% damage bonus on top of your max hit, I'm not sure if that applies beforehand, but even if it doesn't, you're still going to be hitting then 1.5 times your max hit on anything that has your max hits health or less. Okay, so total that brings us to this list. It broke it out into mage, range, and melee. So at Mage, we're looking at a couple small increases in the beginning. We get the big tier five boost like every single thing. And so we end up with a total of 277 or 361%, depending on whether you got four tick or five tick weapons. 
Now, because we're going to have 10 ability perks, that means we're going to have to choose at least two tiers. So I also took the liberty of adding a tier three comparison. So you could see what the percentage increase is using only up to the tier three relic and not having to take all the way up to tier five. I've also done tiers, no tier six here. So anyways, you can see that going from tier three to tier six is a massive increase, but going from tier five to tier six, at least as I have it now down for mage, which is only a 10% increase, which I do think is very low. You don't see a massive jump from tier five to tier six. Reigns, on the other hand, has by far the biggest numbers. You're looking at something like a 420% increase to your damage if you're using five tick weapons, although this drops significantly if you're down at tier three. Without taking tier six, you also see a significant drop. For this range table, by the way, we're assuming a 70% hit chance. We can drop this down to 60%, you'll see these numbers grow even more. But if we're at something like a 80% hit chance or 90% hit chance, they will go down substantially as well. For now, I'm keeping it around 70, assuming some of the late game content would normally have about a 70% hit rate. Who knows? You can change it to 80 if it makes more sense. Finally, we have melee, which performs by far the worst. I think the melee calculations here are correct, so I don't think there's really room to grow like there is for mage. Could easily see mage actually being the best with something like a shadow. But anyways, the peak of melee here seems to be at about 300% for your total, including tier six. But what's nice about melee is if you take it as a secondary, you're only looking at a 17% decrease here overall to go down to tier five. That's because this tier six boost is only 6% here on average, which just feels like absolutely nothing when you look at range or when you compare it even to mage. And I really think mage is a little bit focused on trash versus high tier monsters, but nevertheless, it, this could probably feel like it's a lot higher depending on how it works. Anyways, that's all for the math side of things. So what are some of the takeaways? Mage has some weird interactions with max hit, and if you have the right gear, you could be guaranteeing big healing and maxing, especially on weak mobs. This is hard to calculate in standard DPS, as you may very well be able to consistently one-hit slayer monsters like fire giants, which will be absurd. It's also not totally clear the interactions with boosts, but I would say Mage is in contention once again for not even including the echo items as a top contender. Range is the most obvious increase and opens up some crazy gear opportunities with never missing and actually drastically devalues taking high tier perks with items like the drag or blowpipe with its accuracy increase. Also, range is traditionally the fastest style and even early on could be dealing with one tick knives, blowpipe, etc. Whether or not tier 6 is worth it will depend completely on what your existing hit chance is. Melee has a terrible tier 6 if my math is right, which I'm doubting only because it looks so bad. Maybe it's boosted by multi-hit items, but right now taking tier 6 to me seems like complete bait. So why do we care? We only get 10 points, so the question is where to spend them. Because tier 6 melee is so bad and range is potentially so strong, it really opens up a 6-4 or 6-3-1 range melee build. However, if we're also facing very high hit chance already, it may be worth skipping tier 6 range and going for a 5-5 build, giving you essentially two of the speed perks from last league. That means you could rock up with some pair of a 2-tick scythe, shadow, and tebow, or similar weapons. The biggest downside is losing that tier 6 prayer penetration, if there are echo bosses praying, or just to like burst down KQ, Aga, Warden's P2. Anyways, wrapping up, hope these numbers help for the people out there trying to be optimal. I still highly suggest you choose your regions and perks based on what you think is most fun. I also recognize that everyone will probably get all 10 points, so hopefully this helps you prioritize which of those perks actually make a real difference. I'll be making more videos, specifically now that we have this info around powerful region and relic combos, but that's all for now. See ya!